we signed off in the previous uh, lecture by discussing uh, pre, uh, in a preliminary fashion uh, what happens if you neglect the stator transients that is neglect the d psi d by d t and d psi d by d q terms in fact set them to 0 and convert the differential equations corresponding to psi d and psi q into algebraic equations and uh, then doing the short circuit analysis. Now, uh, we saw of course, that uh, the eigenvalues which we obtained uh, were very similar, they were a subset practically a subset of the eigenvalues obtained earlier. That is because the transients associated with psi d and psi q are fast. In fact, we did not prove it, uh, we kind of uh, intuitively guessed it. Uh, something of course, which you can prove using uh, the participation factors, which we have discussed in the 8th or 9th lecture of this course. Now, uh, in today's lecture, we just uh, continue our discussion. We had in fact, done a very preliminary analysis. We did not complete our discussion about the short circuit analysis of a generator with the psi d and psi q transients neglected. Okay. We call that uh, the number of states reduces from 6 to 4 we are of course, uh, assuming the speed of the generator is constant. Uh, so, we are only looking at the flux transients and uh, we will redo this example uh, and uh, we will try to understand what exactly information we are losing uh, or what information we really do not lose much uh, in case we make that approximation of neglecting the fast transients. Okay. Now, the reason of course, we are neglecting what are known as the fast transients is that the eigenvalue corresponding to it is large. So, that is why the rates of change associated with that mode uh, are fast. You may recall the eigenvalue which is fast or uh, has a high magnitude has a complex part which is practically equal to uh, omega which is the uh, speed of the rotating generator. Now, uh, so today's lecture in fact, we will go on uh, a bit ahead and also uh, try to understand the behavior of a generator which is synchronized to a voltage source. So, we will go one step ahead and connect the generator to a voltage source. Okay. Now, so today's lecture in fact, uh, we will first move on and uh, do a study which we left halfway last time. So, recall that when we do the short circuit analysis of a generator, the response is given by this. So, this is what we got in the uh, last lecture and uh, recall that the current was looks like this. So, we will just look at the current, we will just redo this again. Okay the current looks like this. There is a band, there is an initial large jump in the current is I d of course, then there is a band corresponding to the state the oscillatory mode. In fact, that is the oscillatory mode of radian frequency 314 radians per second that is 2 pi into 50. Thereafter, the current settles down to uh, E f t divided by x d. Okay. Now, if we do the same analysis with the stator transients or uh, neglected or equivalently neglecting d psi d by d t and d psi q by d t. In that case, the current that you get looks a bit different. It is shown off as I said last time of the oscillatory band and in fact, it goes to a value of roughly between 4 and 5 initially, then it drops down to around 3 and then gradually drops to the steady state value. In fact, what I mean will become clear here. If you expand this, you said that initially you see that there is a relatively sharp drop from roughly 4.25 to around 3.25 and then there is a gradual drop. Okay. So, this is the nature of the curve and then of course, it. so there are in fact two modes you see one quickly decaying mode it sharply comes down here and then slowly it 
drops off. Okay. In fact, it is interesting to note that if you look at E f d which is 1, we have chosen it to be 1 divided by x t double dash. In fact, it is 4.34 which is in fact, the value which we are seeing here initially. Okay. And after some time 3.33. So, you can see that initially the current takes the value E f d by x t double dash, then it drops very quickly and then becomes roughly E f d by x t dash and after a long time in steady state in about 2 to 3 seconds in fact, it drops down to the steady state value which is 1 upon by x d. Now, this is the reason why uh, a synchronous generator especially in short circuit studies is represented uh, not sometimes not by its dynamical equations, but roughly by uh, static equations or algebraic equations which tell us that the current initially will be E f d by x d double dash and after some time after a few cycles it will be E f d by x d dash and in steady state it is E f d by x d. Okay. So, this is basically the reason in fact, why in short many short circuit studies we in fact do that for what is known as a sub transient period. We take the reactance of the generator to be very small that is in fact, the x d double dash value. Then after a few cycles we take what is known as the transient value of the reactance and then the steady state value. So, I hope uh, from this dynamical study which is uh, in fact, neglecting the stator transients, neglecting the oscillatory band which comes if you consider stator transients shows that this uh, approximation is okay. I mean it gives a rough picture of what happens. So, you have got a initially large current, then a smaller current, then the steady state value. Okay. So, that is how uh, the behavior of the machine is during short circuit. In fact, uh, neglecting the stator transients results in removal of the oscillatory band, the decaying oscillatory band of 50 hertz in the current response uh, in fact, in the I d and I q. In fact, I have not shown you I q. So, you can just have a look at what how I q looks like. I q with the stator transients neglected looks like this. In fact, uh, okay, these figures have got superimposed. So, I will just do this again. So, it is in fact, it is a very small current in fact, uh, this 0 0.04 it may not be visible very clearly on your scene this 0 0.04. So, it is practically 0. So, I d I q is practically 0, but here too you are not seeing any oscillatory band because we have neglected the stator transients. Okay. Uh, interestingly, I a looks like this. So, if you look at I a it looks like this. So, you have got in fact, I a remember is in steady state a sinusoid. Okay. I a is the current in the a phase. It is in fact, a, so in fact, under short circuit conditions and neglecting the stator transients, you get what is a looks like a symmetrical 50 hertz waveform. So, you see symmetrical in the sense that there is no DC offset in this. Okay. So, you do not see any DC offset. On the other hand, if you did consider stator transients like the original program did, let us just do it once more. Yeah, And uh, if you plot I a, what you see is a totally different picture. You have got a DC offset in the phase current. Okay. So, it may be said that by neglecting the stator transients. So, you see the DC offset as well. So, by neglecting the stator transients, we are neglecting an oscillatory 50 hertz component in the d q currents I d I q. Okay. And, uh, but the phase current equivalently when we neglect the stator transients, we are in fact neglecting the DC offset. So, DC offset in the phase currents manifests as an oscillatory 
component in the d q variables. Okay. So, this is an important interesting uh, interpretation of the results. Okay. Now, um, of course, it is not difficult to prove this, it is uh, fairly straightforward to prove that this is true. I will now show you uh, an experimental verification of uh, a short circuit applied on a synchronous machine. In fact, uh, we will be doing the short circuit on a medium sized machine. Of course, uh, uh, this is still a small synchronous machine as compared to the machines which are used in power systems which can go up to hundreds of megawatts. Uh, remember of course, the parameters of a small synchronous machine can be significantly different from uh, a large synchronous machine. Very notably all the lossy elements that is resistance of windings, uh, the friction of bearings etcetera tend to be higher in smaller machines. Nonetheless, uh, we still can uh, show you some interesting features uh, uh, or rather show to you that the short circuited current of a open circuited synchronous machine uh, does have the signatures uh, which we have discussed in the simulation and theory we have done uh, some time ago. So, in this uh, particular uh, experiment you have a DC prime mover which I am pointing out at connected to a synchronous uh, machine. The synchronous machine will be run up to uh, roughly the rated speed of the machine uh, by the prime mover and uh, we will excite the machine uh, not of course, to its full voltage we will give a low voltage short circuit. So, that the currents uh, are uh, safe uh, for uh, you know for, for the purpose of this lab demonstration. So, I will start this demonstration now remember that of course, we will be we will uh, the machine has already been uh, started uh, and it is running and uh, it is also been excited to give a very low voltage uh, not uh, around 5 to 10 volts at the about sorry about uh, about 20 volts line to line RMS at the terminals of the machine. So, we will apply a dead short circuit under these conditions. Okay. So, uh, let us observe the current waveforms for the phase A, B and C under these circumstances. So, we will start our video now. So, this is the DC machine prime mover that is the synchronous machine and of course, this synchronous machine has a self excited DC generator as its excitation. It is not a static excitation system, it is a rotating excitation system. So, uh, we use a DC self excited DC generator for self excitation. The machine is already on running and the voltage is uh, not a very high voltage just around 20 volts line to line which appears across the three phases uh, three phase output of the three windings of the synchronous machine. This is an MCB uh, which is connecting all the three phases. We will be uh, connecting all the three phases together to create a short three phase short okay. and these are the current probes uh, which are going to the oscilloscope uh, at which we will observe the short circuit currents. So, now uh, I we will actually perform this short circuit by actually connecting all the three phases together. Uh, so, the MCB will have to be switched on to the on position and we will simultaneously view the short circuit. So, it will be any time now yeah he has given the short circuit and you see that large envelope in the beginning okay, which decays you will also see a DC offset it is not very clear here. here. So, I will show you uh, the actual figures. So, if you this is what we actually captured okay. we switched gave a short then remove the short by opening the MCB again and gave another short. So, we, we actually did it twice. Okay. Uh, one of the things you will notice in the waveform this is expanded okay. the expanded uh, part of this waveform is shown below you will see that there is a DC offset as well as the envelope sinusoidal envelope is quite large in the beginning. Okay. Uh, DC offset and a large envelope. Okay. Uh, the DC offset in all the three phases are not the same. Okay. It depends on the instant at which you apply the short circuit. This is something you can think over why it is so. In fact, you will notice that uh, when you apply the short circuit the first time and the second time the waveforms look a bit different. That is because the DC component uh, when we applied the short circuit here is different from the DC offset component which decays 
uh, out here. That really depends on the instant of so short circuit. What point on the sinusoidal waveform of the input voltage did you apply the short circuit? It is different uh, for uh, when we did the shock short circuit at this instant and at this instant. So, you actually see different DC offsets in the different phases. Okay. But one thing is clear of course, that there is a DC offset which you see very clearly here, this is a DC offset and also the overall envelope uh, of this waveform decays with time. So, both the uh, overall envelope as well as uh, the there is a DC uh, component which decays with time. Okay. So, this is a uh, as uh, as shown in the simulation results and as discussed in the theory. So, the, in some sense it validates our theory. The only of course, difference in the simulated result and this is that this is a relatively smaller machine. So, its parameters are not uh, actually uh, the, the similar to the parameters of a very large machine, but nonetheless you see these uh, signatures uh, in the current waveforms. Okay. Now, uh, there is another uh, figure I would like you to see is that of the field current under these conditions. Okay. So, when I give you a short circuit, if I, there is a short circuit applied at uh, the three phase uh, stator terminals, uh, your field current is also affected and what you notice here, this is something I did not show in the live uh, uh, experimental demonstration, but we captured this waveform by performing the experiment again. This is the field current which you see uh, initially there is some current value in the field, field winding. As soon as you apply the short circuit, there is a oscillatory response. Okay. Normally, of course, the DC, uh, the field current is a DC current, but you see an oscillatory response which dies out with time as well as an exponential decay. Okay. So, eventually of course, the field current goes to its original value that does not change, because the field voltage being applied is constant. We do not have any AVR or anything of that kind. Okay. It is a constant field voltage applied by a self excited DC generator. So, you see this 50 hertz oscillatory component in I f. Okay. Remember that the d q currents, the field current, the d q fluxes and the field fluxes as well as the torque see an oscillatory decaying component, which is near about 50 hertz, okay, which has got a frequency near about 50 hertz. This manifests as a DC or decaying DC offset in the phase currents. Okay. So, this is something which you should keep in mind. So, in the field current, you do see this 50 hertz oscillation, okay, decaying 50 hertz oscillation as well as an overall decay. Okay. So, this envelope here decays as well as there is a this, this uh, you know, you can say the there is also one more uh, you know mode which is very clearly seen which is decaying this way okay so this is uh, basically a summary of uh, the experimental results obtained for a short circuited generator so this is as far as as our analysis of uh, a short circuited generator is uh, concerned one of the important ideas which we learned in this lecture was that we could under such certain circumstances uh, neglect the fast transients, but that would be equivalent to neglecting the DC offsets in the phase currents or the oscillatory band which you see in the in the DQ currents. Okay. Now, uh, we move on to another interesting uh, simulation. Uh, in fact, this time it will be a simulation that would be corresponding to the connection of this generator a generator under open circuit conditions, which is rotating at uh, rotating to a voltage source. Okay. So, what we will do now in this uh, subsequent uh, simulation, which I will show you is using the same equations, which we have derived. A machine initially will assume to be open circuited, it is running slightly at a frequency, which is slightly higher than that of a three phase balanced voltage source to which it is going to be connected. Okay. We will assume that it is in steady state and under open circuit conditions. The machine has been excited. Okay. Uh, it has been excited in such a way that you get 1 per unit line to line voltage across its terminals. The windings of course, we assume to be star connected. So, in some sense we have we prepare the generation generator for connecting it to a synchronous uh, to a voltage source. The voltage source has a frequency say omega naught. Okay. 
whereas uh, let us assume that the synchronous machine is rotating at a slightly higher frequency than omega naught. Okay. So, in fact, uh, you can you can look at it this way if if you have got a voltage source a star connected voltage source. Okay. So, this is a star connected voltage source it is a balanced voltage source. So, we will not consider 0 sequence quantities. We will assume that the voltage source is such that V A to neutral is equal to okay, root 2 by 3 sin omega naught t. Okay, we will assume it is a source which has got a frequency and of course, V B n is sin 2 pi by 3 or 120 degrees and V C n is root 2 by 3. Now, what we have uh, if V A n, V B n, V C n are like this, let us assume that the synchronous machine is rotating uh, and the theta of the machine, okay, the angular position of a machine is omega naught t plus delta. Okay. So, if this is omega naught t, this is omega naught t plus delta. Okay. Now, of course, in case the speed of the machine, the speed of the machine is nothing but omega which is nothing but d theta by d t. If it is not equal to omega naught, in that case delta will be time varying. Okay. So, what we consider initially is that you have got a synchronous machine which is to be connected to this voltage source. So, we will be connecting it to this voltage source and it is rotating at a slightly higher frequency than omega naught which is actually the frequency electrical frequency of this voltage three phase voltage source. Okay. Now, in case V a n, V b n, V c n are like this we have done in an earlier lecture that V d by applying the transformation V d is nothing but minus 1.0 sin delta. See remember theta is omega naught t plus delta. So, this source has got V d and V q like this. Okay. So, recall that in our analysis of a short circuited generator, we had simply put V d and V q equal to 0 and in the open circuited conditions, we assume that a very large generator, a uh, very large resistance R l is connected in star at the terminals of the machine. Okay. But now you are connecting it to a voltage source, so V d and V q are specified. Okay. So, what we are going to do is try to simulate a machine which is connected to a voltage source whose V d and V q values are given here. Okay. This is unlike what we did for an open circuited uh, open circuit generator and a short circuit generator where uh, we did not have a voltage source connected at the terminal. We just connected to a resistance whose value we flipped from say 1000 per unit to 0 you know to simulate an open circuit and a short circuit. Okay. Now, once this is uh, for obtaining V d V q from V a V b n V a n V b n and V c n you of course, have to use this use the transformation C p. Uh, I will not do it in this class we have done it sometime earlier. Now, what we will do of course, here is uh, once we have uh, got this how do you actually simulate this uh, machine connected to a voltage source? Well, it is not very difficult recall that for a short uh, we had done the equations of a machine where we had written psi d dot where psi d dot is psi d psi d by d t psi h psi f psi g plus a 2 
into I D I Q plus B 1 into V D V Q and uh, plus B 2 into E F T. So, these are the two inputs which we have. Okay. Now, remember that in the previous uh, discussion when we are considering an open uh, open circuited generator, we had subsumed this into this because V D and V Q were related to I D and I Q because we considered that a star connected resistance is connected at the generator. Okay. But now, we have independently going to specify V D and V Q. Okay. Now, these are the equations the flux equations, but very importantly whenever you are considering the synchronization of a machine, it is important to consider the transients. Uh, associate the electromechanical transients. Okay. So, what we will do here is of course, that we have to write down the equations of uh, the motion of the machine and recall that we had obtained in that the equations in per unit where omega b is the electrical base frequency, omega is the electrical radian frequency is equal to T m in per unit, the per unit uh, mechanical torque minus psi d i q minus psi q i d. This of course, a per unit equation. Okay. Another equation which we have is since theta is equal to omega naught plus delta, it follows that d theta by d t is equal to d theta by d t is nothing but omega naught plus d delta by d t. So, another equation which we have is d delta by d t is equal to omega minus omega naught, where omega is nothing but d theta by d t. Okay. So, this equation along with this equation and this equation determine the behavior of a synchronous machine. Okay. In the short circuit and open circuit analysis, we had assumed that the speed is constant, we will not be making that assumption here. Okay. Now, these equations are of course, coupled. Why are they coupled? Because V d is in fact a function of delta. V d and V q are functions of delta that is what we just did some time back. Okay. And in A 1 if you recall the equations of psi d and psi q omega appears. Okay. So, there is a coupling here also. So, A 1 in fact is a function of is a function of omega. Okay. And in the electromechanical uh, the mechanical equations psi d and psi q of course, are coupled to those equations. Of course, we have to give the initial conditions. The initial conditions are such E f d is 1, okay. speed is almost equal to omega base or the rated speed and let us assume that the frequency of the let this is an assumption we will make that uh, omega naught which is the infinite bus or the voltage source. In fact, the voltage source since it is a perfect voltage source it can be called as an infinite bus. Its frequency is nothing but omega. So, we will just assume this. So, what we are effectively assuming is omega is approximately omega naught. It may be slight uh, what we really are going to do in this simulation is have omega slightly higher than omega naught. Okay. Now, E f d is equal to 1, if speed were equal to omega the base speed, then the line to line voltage which would appear across a star connected synchronous generator would be in fact 1 per unit. So, the voltage source which we have uh, the voltage source or the infinite bus which we have has got line to line voltage 1 per unit. The voltage source the generator itself has a open circuit voltage line to line voltage also of 1 per unit slightly higher in fact, because we are going to have omega slightly higher than omega naught. Okay. 
So, what we will be doing is uh, connecting the synchronous machine under these circumstances. Uh, the fluxes all the fluxes we assume are in steady state under open circuited conditions. Okay. So, we pre calculate the steady state open circuit conditions and then apply or connect the machine to the infinite bus. Of course, since uh, the speed of the machine is slightly greater than the infinite bus, if we delay in fact, if we assume that initially delta is equal to 0, if we delay a bit the connection of the machine to the infinite bus delta will change. Okay. Remember that uh, d delta by d t is equal to omega minus omega naught. So, delta is in fact changing linearly. So, in fact, if we delay this or connect the synchronous machine when delta is large, you will get a correspondingly large transient. Okay. So, we will assume that we are at a steady state. So, I will pre calculate the steady state values of a synchronous machine under open circuit conditions and then what we will do is uh, connect the machine under various values of time. Okay. So, remember that we assume that at t is equal to 0, delta is equal to 0. So, as time increases delta will change because delta is equal to omega minus omega naught and omega is slightly greater than omega naught. Okay. So, I will first what we will do is synchronize the machine to the voltage source the three phase balance voltage source. In fact, since the initial speed of the machine is slightly greater than uh, the infinite or the voltage source. Once you connect it, you will notice that if the machine does synchronize properly, then you will find that the speed of the machine is equal to that of the in steady state, it becomes equal to that of the voltage source. Okay. So, good uh, if you have uh, if the machine synchronizes. So, the you, this is what is known as synchronization. It a machine kind of even if its initial speed is slightly higher than the uh, frequency of the voltage source it is to be synchronized to. Once you connect it, it locks on to the frequency of the voltage source. In fact, if you recall uh, the experiment uh, uh, demonstration, experimental demonstration which I showed to you um, uh, in the first lecture of this course, we in fact did just this. Okay. So, let us just see uh, this particular simulation. Okay. Before we go ahead, uh, let us see the program which actually implements this. One uh, problem in trying to write a program for this particular set of equations, set of differential equations which we have seen is the nonlinearity of the differential equations because of the product terms. So, we cannot directly apply eigenvalue or eigenvector analysis and write down the response. You know, there are product terms uh, which appear here. In fact, V d and V q are sine of delta and co, uh, have sine of delta and cosine of delta terms. So, you have got what is known as a nonlinear set of coupled differential equation ordinary differential equations. Uh, we will have to apply numerical techniques to solve these equations. Now, one of the problems in applying numerical techniques in this particular equation set of equations is that it is stiff and of course, we spend quite a bit of time in the first um, in around the fifth to tenth lecture trying to understand how we can analyze stiff systems without a significant loss of accuracy. Now, uh, one of the things we have already done uh, for short circuit analysis is removed a stiff part of the system. What was the stiff part of the system? The differential equations corresponding to psi d and psi q. So, what we did was uh, you know assumed in these equations that psi d dot and just, just replace this by 0 made these algebraic equations. Okay. The first two equations become algebraic equations simply by set, setting these two to 0 d psi d by d t and d psi q by d t. Then we can express psi d and psi q in terms of these fluxes okay. and thereafter uh, we can do the simulation of a reduced system, wherein we have removed the stiffness, because we have in fact neglected the fast transients. So, that is what we will do. 
the reason why we do it is uh, somewhat opportunistic as far as this particular lecture is concerned. If I want to solve a set of nonlinear differential equations which are stiff, then uh, it is a good idea to use an implicit method like trapezoidal rule, but we have seen uh, in the lectures in which I described to you non uh, simulation of nonlinear systems. If you want to apply implicit methods like trapezoidal rule, in each step you will have to solve nonlinear algebraic equations in order to obtain the value of the states at that step. So, that becomes a, a fairly complicated programming exercise. So, what I have done is uh, I have taken the simpler path that is I have removed the fast transients of the system, uh, removed the stiffness to some extent by neglecting d psi d by, by d t and d psi q by d t and then used a simple explicit method like Euler method with a small enough time constant, a uh, small enough time step. The reason of course, is that Euler method is not very accurate, it is not a very, it is a first order method, it is not very accurate. So, I have to keep the time step a bit low, but at least uh, by doing this, removing the stiffness, we have achieved, uh, we, have, we have avoided uh, trying to have a complicated program in tra trapezoidal rule, which will require us to solve nonlinear algebraic equations at every step. Okay. So, let us uh, try to simulate the system with Euler method of course, with d psi d by, by d t and d psi q by d t neglected. So, let us uh, now look at this program. So, please pay attention to this program. So, what we will do is simulate a synchronized generators. Now, we are doing actually simulation that is numerical integration in this program. The base frequency we take as 2 pi into 50. Uh, the speed of the generator initially is omega which is at present. I will of course, change this value when we uh, will try to change this value later probably. It is slightly higher it is 10 percent uh, uh, it is in fact 1 percent higher than omega b. These are the values of the parameters which I have chosen. In fact, they are the same as what we use for a short circuit study. The important thing of course, is T m is equal to 0. See, uh, if a machine is running under open circuited conditions, the mechanical power equals 0. Uh, of course, in real life, uh, since we are, uh, uh, you will require little bit of mechanical power to overcome the friction even though you are running at no load. So, under open circuit conditions you are in fact at no load. So, in real life you have to have some little bit of mechanical torque to overcome the uh, uh, friction, but of course, we have not modeled friction here. So, T m in fact has to be 0, otherwise of course, the machine would keep on accelerating. So, mechanical power is equal to 0. Initially, the machine is under open circuited conditions. So, for equilibrium we have to have mechanical power equal to 0. Okay since electrical power is also 0. Now, we do the same things as we had done before. We are going to calculate the time constants uh, T d dash, T t double dash, T q dash, T q double dash and recall that our state space equation would be like this. The equilibrium conditions of course, are given by uh, you know by as we have discussed in the previous uh, lecture we effectively have to set x dot is equal to 0 that is uh, all the rates of change of the states have to be set to 0 and the uh, corresponding algebraic equations have to be solved in order to get uh, the steady state values of the states. In fact, this x s s here in fact, is the steady state variable steady state values of the fluxes under open circuit conditions. Okay. So, initially of course, uh, remember that we are under open circuit conditions. Okay. So, what I have assumed is that V d and V q are related to I d and I q by this relationship V is equal to R l i, R l being a very large value 1000 to simulate an open circuited generator. Thereafter, what we do is we give the initial condition corresponding to the steady state values under open circuited conditions 
of the synchronous machine. The initial speed is omega which is slightly greater than omega naught. The infinite bus or rather the voltage source electrical frequency is omega naught which is equal to the base frequency. The initial value of delta is 0. Okay. Now, we do the in numerical integration. Now, remember that this is the a 1 matrix we reduce a 1 matrix by neglecting the fast transient. So, this is the step which does this. So, we apply Euler's method here. So, this line effectively tells you that I am, I am using effectively Euler method here to simulate with a time step of 0, 0, 0 0.005 that is 5 milliseconds. Okay. So, we move on down here electrical torque is calculated. So, I am using a reduced order model remember with d psi d by d t equal to 0. Okay. Now, once the short uh, once at time t is equal to t 1 if you look at this initial simulation under open circuit conditions is carried out till time capital T 1 at time t is equal to T 1 we connect the machine. So, our Euler integration includes includes B 1 B 1 equivalent in fact, where B 1 is in fact related to I will just come to B 1 here one second. So, if you look at where B 1 is it is it will be here okay, here is B 1. Okay. So, B 1 is nothing but minus V sin delta and so on which is basically V d and V q. So, as soon as you at time t is equal to t 1 B 1 effectively we switch Uh, we kind of have a switch here in which we remove this R L which appears in A 2. Okay. We remove this R L which appears in A 2 and we apply the voltage. So, recall that uh, we had simulated a open circuit by subsuming the effect of V D and V Q under open circuited conditions in A 2 by you know representing V D and V Q as R into I D and I Q R L into I D and I Q. Now, we remove that R L from A 2 and we connect the voltage source. So, we have got this second input B 1. Okay. So, you can of course, look at this program it is a bit involved I will not uh, you know explain every step, but you can just have a look at it nonetheless. Okay. Okay. So, what I will do is after T is equal to 5 I will actually start increasing the mechanical torque of the machine. Okay, at t is equal to 10, I will increase it even further, but before we do that, let us simulate the system only to the point of synchronization. So, I will limit my simulation to 5 seconds. Okay. So, let us try to do that. So, there I run it. Okay, it is already done. So, what I have done effectively is that uh, one thing which you probably I forgot to tell you that T 2 has been chosen to be 5 and T 1 has been chosen to be 0.2. So, T 1 is the point at which I remove R L the so you know R L of course, is very large value uh, of the star connected resistance at the generator and connect the generator to a voltage source. Okay. So, we are from a open circuited condition we are going to a short circuit uh, open circuited condition we are going to a condition in which we have connected the machine to the voltage source. So, T 1 is is the time at which we do that T 2 is the end time of the simulation. Okay. So, of course, if I plot this um, for example, omega this is how what it looks like. So, please pay attention to this initially the speed is 10 percent higher than 314 okay 314 is roughly the speed at 50 hertz okay so at time t is equal to 0.2 we connect the machine and what you notice is 
that the frequency locks on to the frequency of the infinite bus. In some sense as I mentioned some time back this is in fact the phenomena of synchronization with the synchronous machine locks on to a voltage source. Okay? And what you see of course, is a, a relatively low frequency swing, it is a low frequency swing which you see uh, or one may say a low frequency oscillation uh, which precedes the steady state. Okay? If you look at the frequency of this, this is roughly it is slightly more than um, it is more than 1 hertz, because this is uh, roughly 0 0.75 seconds and this is 1. So, roughly this is uh, you know the frequency turns out to be 1 upon 0 0.75 which is the period the answer you multiply by 2 star pi. So, the frequency is roughly I am sorry pi is 3.14. So, roughly the frequency is around 8 actually this is a very rough kind of calculation, but this is the approximate order slightly greater than 1 hertz you see a swing this is in fact called a swing. Okay? So, uh, it is associated with the electromechanical transients in the machine. Now, in fact if you look at delta we will close this window of omega and plot delta. this is how it looks. So, till point in fact, till point 0.2 seconds you see that delta is increasing linearly, it is increasing linearly because the speed of the synchronous machine is 10 percent more than the infinite bus, it is increasing linearly. I have zoomed this and uh, after some time uh, at this point we of course, connect the machine. So, it kind of synchronizes. Okay? Now, if you look at the electrical torque as well, you can have a look at the electrical torque. Uh, well, it has got superimposed on this. So, we will just do it again. Yeah. So, at of course, initially the electrical torque is 0, but as soon as you connect the machine, it kind of oscillates. There is a torque transient. In fact, uh, you see that the torque becomes positive and then negative and so on. And in fact, it is slightly positive to begin with and then it goes negative. That is one of the reasons of course, is that the speed of the machine is slightly greater than that of the infinite bus. So, in fact, the machine gives out some of some energy eventually to the infinite bus. Uh, because its overall kinetic energy reduces. Okay? That is eventually the speed settles down to the speed of the infinite bus a so, little bit. Okay? So, you see this torque transient. Okay? So, actually uh, this is the electrical torque. In fact, we will hold this figure and we will just do one more thing. We will suppose our time of connection was when delta was almost 0. That is the voltage source is the open circuited voltage source of a synchronous machine is almost uh, I mean if delta is smaller it really means that the open circuit voltage uh, of the machine is practically equal to that of the infinite bus. If delta is 0 it is in fact it is equal to. Okay? So, in fact if we uh, you know uh, do the synchronization a bit early delta movement from 0 is reduced and you are connecting the synchronous machine uh, to the voltage source when delta is smaller. So, one can expect that there will be a smaller transient. Okay? Uh, of course, the ideal situation for a bumpless transfer would be that you know your delta is practically equal to 0 that is the volt the phase angle of the open circuited voltage of the synchronous machine just before it is synchronized is equal to the voltage of the infinite bus. Okay? The phase of the voltage of the infinite bus. So, that would be an ideal situation. In fact, uh, those who are aware of the dark lamp method of synchronization or the syn synchroscope method of synchronization uh, would recall that we synchronize as close to 0 delta equal to 0 as we can. Okay? Now, suppose I make uh, this delay in synchronization smaller, I mean in the sense that I make T 1 as 0 0.1. So, delta will, be, will deviate less from 0 in the time period 0 0.1 
So, in that case if I rerun this again what you will see is of course, that the electrical torque would be smaller. In fact, uh, the bump should be smaller that is what you should see. Yeah. So, we have done the synchronization a bit earlier here and uh, the overall torque transient certainly has reduced. Okay. So, you can reduce you can make it a bumpless transfer uh, if we get the speeds almost equal of the machines equal and we also synchronize around delta is equal to 0. Okay. So, absolute bumpless transfer will occur for example, if in this program I make if I make the machine synchronized when the speed is exactly equal to the synchronous speed uh, speed of the infinite bus and delta also is 0. So, delta is 0 if I do the synchronization right at time t is equal to 0 because I have said that my initial value of delta is 0 at t is equal to 0. So, if I do the synchronization under these circumstances of course, you should have a nice really nice uh, transfer. In fact, you will not get any transient. Uh, okay, you see a transient, but if you look at the scales, they are uh, e effectively indicative only of numerical error. In fact, this is 0 0.001 the electrical torque uh, 0 0.0015 here. Okay. So, practically it is a bumpless transfer, it is a very very small value which you are seeing here. So, this is basically what we get to see here. Okay. Yeah. We will now move on to trying to see seeing what try to see what happens when we synchronize the generator, but we will do something more. We will synchronize the generator and now increase the power. Okay. So, I increase the electric mechanical input power to uh, the you know to the turbine and therefore, the generator gets more mechanical power. If the mechanical power increases of course, the electrical power also will increase because eventually in steady state mechanical and electrical power is the same. So, what you will find is that your mechanical power will increase then the electrical power also increases. Okay. So, let us do that. So, what I will do now is I uh, will do the simulation. So, I will not worry too much about the synchronization transient Maybe I will just get back to what we were some time ago. What I will do is simulate for a longer time say I will do it for 10 seconds I will simulate this for 10 seconds the end time is 10. What I will do is now at t is equal to 5 seconds after t is equal to 5 seconds I will give a step change in the mechanical power. Of course, it is not easy to give a step change in the mechanical power, of, uh, but we will just uh, for the sake of analysis, we will assume that I am, I am able to give a step change. Normally, you will ramp it up uh, with a certain rate of rise. Okay. So, a real turbine you can only ramp up the power, you cannot give a step change, but uh, that is okay. we will just uh, see what happens. We will keep the EFD still at 1 per unit. Okay. So, what we will do is uh, we will simulate only for 5 seconds. So, I saved it and now I rerun it. So, if I plot uh, now if I plot the electrical torque what you notice here is that I simulate it for of course, 10 seconds this is the initial synchronization transient the electrical torque becomes equal to the mechanical torque which is 0 but at time t is equal to 5 I give a step change in T m and the machine oscillates and goes and settles down to this new value of T m. Okay. The new value of T m is 0.25 per unit. Okay. So, it of course, mechanical power becomes equal to the electrical power. So, electrical power also becomes 0.25. So, if I look at uh, instead of looking at the torque I look at the speed. What you notice of course, is if you there is a initial uh, initial synchronization transient after which the speed settles down to the speed omega naught even after increasing the 
electrical torque the speed of the machine does not change. Okay. I mean uh, the speed, there is of course, a transient here, but eventually it again settles down to omega naught that is because the machine in some sense is synchronized and locked on to the voltage source which has a constant frequency. Remember that if you are in synchronism the machine tends to stay synchronized okay? unless of course, I give a very large disturbance. If you look at delta on the other hand it settles down to a value okay? you see the oscillation here and also uh, you know you see an exponential mode also in addition to the oscillation. So, you have got a damped oscillation and an exponential growth that is of course, because there are many many modes associated here. This is of course, a nonlinear system, but uh, you do sometimes of course, if the system is not too nonlinear see near the equilibrium point the appearance of all these typical transients like exponent exponential growth and decay or uh, oscillatory growth and decay. Okay. So, this is what you are really seeing. Okay and uh, the delta settles down to a value of approximately 0.4. Okay. So, this is the settling value of delta. Okay. Now, what we will do next is do something more at time t is equal to 15 seconds uh, or time t is equal to 10 seconds, I will increase mechanical power to 1 okay. or let me do one thing, I will increase it to 1, but I do not I keep E f d at 1 also. So, I do not change the field voltage, I still keep E f d at 1 and I increase the mechanical power to 1 at time t is equal to 10 seconds. Now, if I do that, of course, I have to simulate for a time longer than 10 seconds. So, I will just simulate for 15 seconds. Okay. So, if I increase the power beyond a certain point, So, what I do, I'll do is plot time versus delta, and what I see here is, oops, what you see is really this angle delta. See, this is basically the transient which we observed last time. I have simulated for a slightly longer time. After 10 seconds, I applied the torque T is equal to one per unit, and what you see is, of course, that delta goes on increasing. So, that is an interesting point that delta keeps on increasing this is because so the machine will eventually lose synchronism. So, in fact, if you look at that is of course, because okay, we will have to plot it again you will find that the speed of the machine in fact goes on change uh, is in fact equal to 3 1 4 once you synchronize it then you if you increase the torque again the speed remains the same, but well the machine seems to be slipping out of synchronism, but of course, this is not apparent in this figure probably if we simulate for a longer time this will become apparent. So, let us do one thing we will simulate this for 25 seconds. Yeah. So, if I do this I just rerun this again ok. So, hopefully, you will be able to see something yeah. So, what we see is eventually the speed you know. So, if you recall what we saw last time was this something like this we simulated it up to certain point thereafter the speed just goes on increasing and the system loses synchronism. Okay. So, this is what we get in case we will just plot it again. If we apply a torque of T m is equal to 1 per unit without changing the field voltage. Okay. So, in fact, uh, is this surprising? For example, I will do also I will show you also the plot of delta it goes on increasing. So, the machine has lost synchronism. So, this is not actually very surprising uh, that is because uh, the reason why this is happening is the mechanical torque which you are giving is in fact greater 
then the maximum possible torque which we can develop in this machine if EFD is kept constant at 1 per unit. Okay. So, uh, I leave an, uh, this as an exercise for you to just check out that in case EFD is 1 and the values of x t, x q which we have here and EFD also is 1, what is the maximum electrical power that we can push through this generator. In case we try to push something more okay, without a corresponding increase in EFD, then what we notice is that the machine loses synchronism. So, in fact, if you recall uh, something which we did uh, quite some time ago that is in the first lecture, I showed you a demonstration of a synchronous machine which loses synchronism if we go on increasing the power output beyond a point mechanical power that is the prime mover power if we go on increasing then beyond a point it loses synchronism. So, today after a lot of uh, model development and uh, understanding how to analyze a dynamical system we have come to a point in which we can simulate this phenomenon. Okay. So, we will spend a little bit more time on this uh, again in the next class I would like to show you what happens in case we increase T m, but also correspondingly increase E f d in that case do we remain in synchronism or not. So, that is something we will do in the next lecture. We will also thereafter look at how we can uh, obtain lower order models of synchronous machines for certain theoretical studies. Okay. So, when we do some kind of theoretical study or when we are explaining a concept sometimes it is better to use a model which is much much more a toy model okay, rather than the full blown model consisting of 6 flux states. So, that is something we will try to do in the next lecture. I hope now uh, with this, uh, these couple of lectures that is the one last time and this time, I hope you are getting a feel uh, and some fun out of understanding some of the phenomena uh, associated with the synchronous machine by a rigorous analysis of the simulated as well as the analytical um, treatment which we are doing here.